we Ions have been vaccinated. And we are ready to welcome the new academic year. Hello, good morning everyone. How are you today? I hope that you are doing good and doing well, although that you are maybe still fasting. I hope that in this Ramadan month, that you will still eager to learn with Real and with me, Miss Astrinda, um, without any feelings of exhausted because of fasting and so on and so forth. Okay, today we will, we, with Real, we will learn together about works and jobs. So we will actually learn about work and job and also a city and a country. Before we go, what is actually the differences between uh, a country and a city and uh, maybe a region, for example. Now let's see. Um, we will see in the first test one. Let me share this to you. Okay. Here. You can see that we have a picture there. And the question is, what country can you see this monumental in real life? So maybe some of you already know uh, where you will see this kind of uh, statue, a big statue, right? Um, but the, the question is relies on the word country. So before you answer uh, the questions with, for example, maybe New York City, I would like to tell you what are the differences between country, city, um, and region, for example. So city is uh, the smallest, the smallest place that you will understand or you will learn, or you will say, for example, city um, um, real, is basically in Yogyakarta and um, the capital city in Indonesia is right now still in Jakarta. So city is the smallest one. And then region, region is the wider or the bigger one uh, from the city. For example, uh, Yogyakarta city is in the Java region. And then uh, take for example, uh, Rio, Rio city is in the Java, eh, sorry, sorry is in the Sumatra region. So um, the co and country is the largest, largest of all. So before you answer that picture with New York City, because the question is the country, so probably it will be uh, best if you answer that with uh, United States of America or just America. Okay, uh, what else of oh, monumental, um, statue or a monumental building that we learned, uh, already learned before, maybe in the seventh magnificent building in the world, we have Borobudur, right? And then in what country Borobudur is? The answer is Indonesia, but in what um, city? Maybe you can say um, uh, Borobudur is in the middle Jaffa, something like that. And the, maybe if the question will, uh, in what region Borobudur is, you can say it is in the Java region, something like that. Okay, any other? Maybe the last examples I'll give you is that um, Great Wall. In what country do you think Great Wall is? Is in the China, correct. So country and nations basically just is the same they are just synonyms so if the questions will be uh in what nations is um evil tower and then you can answer with um is it in the first something like that okay let's next 
to listening exercise. So we will just listen to. So basically, we have two of listening exercise, but I don't think that we will do both of it. So we'll just do one of the listening exercise. SMP, Grade 7, Unit 2, Work and Jobs, Task 2. Oh, this is Task 2, sorry. So I'll go, just go with Task 2. SMP, Grade 7, Unit 2, Work and Jobs, Task 3. One. Hello. Washington, D.C. has many tourists. People from different countries come here. Today, my job is to interview tourists. I have to learn why they come here. This is very exciting. Excuse me. I'm Anna Mateo from the News. Do you have time for an interview? Sure, I have time. What is your name? My name is Sabrina. And what country are you from? I'm from Bangladesh. Oh, so you are Bangladeshi. That's right. My nationality is Bangladeshi. Do you like Washington, D.C.? Yes. The city is very beautiful. Two. Let's find another tourist. Oh, excuse me. I'm Anna Mateo from the News. Do you have time for a couple of questions? Sure. Are you from Washington, D.C.? No, I'm not. What is your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Louis and I'm from China. What languages do you speak? I speak Chinese and English. Three. Hello, I'm Anna Mateo from the News. Do you have time to answer a couple of questions? Sure. What is your name and where are you from? My name is Marnoush. I'm from Iran. I'm Iranian. What language do they speak in Iran? Is it Persian? Uh, they speak Farsi. Listening. So in our listening, we actually, you don't need to confuse about the name. Oh, before that, let's let us um, greet Mbak Ruri. Is it Mbak Ruri or Mas Ruri there? So, um, Kak, Kak Ruri mungkin ya, Kak Ruri, oke. Okay. So, hello Kak Ruri. And then, uh, on our listening, we don't need to be confused with the name. Um, it's not really uh, important because what we really want to learn here is about the country um, and the nationality. So, but in the listening, it's also uh, explained about uh, the, the vocabulary of the language that every country has. Um, for example, the first person, the interviewer, just asked a lady, a lady about her um, origin or her, her country from, and then the nationality and also the language. But in our, in our column, we, we only have nationality, but we will, we will talking about the language as well. Okay, um, the first country, Bangladesh. When you actually from Bangladesh, you call yourself or you call your nationality will be Bangladeshi. Something that she already explains uh, to us in listening, all right? And then uh, it's just the same with the language. You call it Bangladeshi. For example, I am Miss Astrinda. Um, I am from, or I am origin from, or my country is Indonesia. And my nationality will be Indonesian. The language is also Indonesian. So you can see here, there is a certain pattern in vocabulary in English that actually will have uh, the same vocabulary according to the identity of a certain country. So what kind of identity that a country will have, it has. So for example, nationality, nationality is kind of identity of a country because 
nationality means of the citizen or the people inside of the country. Also the language, the language is also part of a, a certain country's identity, of course, yeah. And then uh, the culture, for example, and maybe the art, the dance, the music, the painting, and so on and so, up, and so, on and so forth. So for example, if I wanna say that um, I learned uh, these specific countries cultures, uh, I will say that I learned uh, Indonesian, Indonesian culture, so something like that. So the vocabulary is just the same between um, the other identity of a country because it's actually part of uh, uh, the descriptions of a country, not the descriptions as a literal descriptions, but the description, descriptions as an identity. So you will learn a lot about uh, any other vocabulary, but not the identity vocabulary. So uh, the identity vocabulary is just the same with the nationality, with the culture. You're talking about well, if you're talking about language, the the, the questions just the the one to get a difference with other. So I'll take another example. Uh, the second uh, the second person is asked about uh, the country that he lived on or the country that he is origin from. And then he, asked, he answered with, um, he come from China. And then uh, the language that the interviewer asked is about what language did you speak then if you are from China? And then he answered with, um, so I speak Chinese. And then because of, we have that kind of vocabulary already, that uh, language is part of uh, the identity of a country. And then we can answer the nationality questions with the same vocabulary. So without even any uh, questions up, uh, from the interviewer, what nationality are you? We can actually answer that. So it's just the same with, um, for example, if you ask me the, uh, what country? Um, I am from, and then, for example, I will ask you that I come from uh, Vietnam, and then you ask about so what language are you use are you using, and then I will just ask uh, Vietnamese something like that. Although there are no columns of language there. It's just like name, country, and nationality, right? But you can answer the nationality column with Vietnamese because every vocabulary according to the identity of the country is just the same. For example, another, another column that you can fill in is with this title with culture, maybe. And uh, music or, or the origin of food something so it's actually just the same okay next to the third one uh, the third person is asked uh, which he is coming from and then he asked from that he is from uh, I, I rent if I'm not mistaken but I think it's I rent and then uh, the third person is asked uh, what nationality he has, and then he he answered with he is Iron Iron Ironian Iron Ironian yeah I think Ironian it spells as Ironian so let's just try to write it down here. Okay, so it's. From Iran, and then I think this if if not Iran, it will be Iraq. So if if the answer is Iraq, it will be Iraqi, something like that. It's, it's really hard to get yeah, there's something like this. 
here. So if the country is Iran, you will answer with Iranian. But if the answer is Iraq, Iraqi, I think it will, it will be uh, with I. Yeah, so it will be Iraqi. So if he comes from Iraq, he will learn a lot about Iraqi language and also Iraqi culture. I like his food, Iraqi food, Iraqi dances, Iraqi uh, music, Iraqi painting, and so on and so forth. Okay. It's hard, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes you have E's, like Chinese, Vietnamese, Japanese, Balinese, something you have E, something you have, you have um, E, Bangladeshi, and then Iraqi, and then something you have an. Uh, there are a lot actually with an, uh, with an ending. Like Canada, you have Canadian. America, you have American. Indonesia, Indonesians. A lot of and, um, ending and is, is actually a lot. And then you will have uh, the last one is you will have a changing, a lot of uh, a totally changing. For example, I come from England and I am uh, I have a nationality of British British people. So a lot, yeah. You you cannot even you cannot even put the same same of the words like English E and then with British B. Okay, uh, did you ask me? Um, how if I how how to actually differentiate if I don't really uh, remember uh, what kind of identity that certain country will have uh, will have ending for? Is it have a I? Is it have a is? Is it have a and? How to actually differentiate that? How to actually have a correct answer if I don't really memorize it? And the answer is no, you cannot. There are no formula for that about what ending um, that has in a certain country. The only formula or the only trick is to memorize it. That's it. So sometimes you have to remember not all of the um, not all of the English um, formula. I can say that in court, yeah. Formula has a real formula like in pencil. Sometimes you have to memorize it. Memorize it fully. Okay. Let's just do another. Let me stop share first because it's hard. Okay. Okay, now let's jump into task four. Oh, it, it's 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 uh, it's running very slow. I cannot do it with the cursor. Oh, I can. Okay. Task four, personal information. So your ID. And then this is still has a, a correlations with uh, the identity of a country that you already learned. Now, sometimes people just don't really understand about the idea of surname. Okay, so what is actually surname? Surname is last name. Indonesian people don't always have last name, right? Uh, some of them just uh, give give their children's names as 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 the good prey or good meaning uh, they they want their their children's have. But in English, um, English origin or English born people there, um, 
they usually have a short name like like i don't i don't really i don't really know about but i think another asian like for example in korea maybe or china or japan i think they they have surname but in japan yeah i'm sure about that in japan uh, the difference is that in japan they put their surname i'm not mistaken in, in front of the name so their their surname their family name and then they just put their name in the middle of in the end but in western country they usually put first name and then they don't put their middle name and then they have their surname because middle name is kind of secret secret because it's it's basically for another uh, important information like bank for example um, middle name and also your mom's your mother's maiden name maiden is before your mom get married to your mother get married and change her name okay um back to our task for surname surname or family names usually put uh at the back set of our first name the first name middle name and surname so me myself actually have a surname from my dad so my first name is um, Astrinda and then my middle name is if I just follow the uh, western world rule I will not show my middle name so just Astrinda Iswalono but if I just follow Indonesian uh, rule Astrinda Nila Sastri uh, I can just um, put in the abbreviate for my surname or just don't put it at all because we don't really think that that is actually important. It's actually just because of uh, the differences of a culture, yeah. Uh, that I'm not really understand why, so please don't ask me. But that is the, that is the um, the explanations about first name and surname. And how if you don't have any surname, like like your last name or probably just another another like another pray another pray um, another another meaningful pray doa doa yang lain ya for example you just put your last name as you just pretend that you have surname especially when you want to uh, make a passport or visa I think something that you will need when you when you have to go abroad but in ktp for example in id ktp is id in ktp or uh, kartu pelajar or kartu mahasiswa you don't really need to uh, pretend that you have a surname but in the passport and so on and so forth, you need to pretend that you have surname because that's what the rule that they have. You need to have surname. So, for example, your name will be like um, Rosa Alamanda Maria, for example, I don't know. Uh, and then you just pretend that your surname is Maria. And then just Maria, Koma, Rosa, that's your name. How do you write it down? Or just um, Rosa, Maria, something like that. You, you, need to, you don't need to uh, write down your middle name. Okay, age. Everybody already understand yeah, about age and what it means, what it asks for, and so on and so forth. And then uh, job and occupation. There are a lot of job uh, and how to explain it if you don't really remember it. So you basically, you cannot just try to memorize it, try to learn a lot about, about vocabulary of job because it's, it's a lot job right now, especially in the modern era right now, yeah? A lot of uh, uh, manual, manually, manually work become technology, become technological. 
and then there are a lot of job job vacancy job vacancy, job vacancy lapangan pekerjaan that um, that just opened because we widening kita melebarkan uh, cara bekerja ya so there are a lot of uh, job vocabulary and then country we already described country email address just just what it is phone number just what it is okay back to job um so if you need me to fill that blank so you will see that my first name is Hasinda and then my surname is Salono and then my age is uh, you can say 17 maybe do I look like a 17 no <laughs> so maybe you can some write numbers there and then job vacancy I am as a teacher or maybe I can, I can just put it as a college students we also that have we also have that kind of uh, quote unquote rules yeah if you don't have a job we just put it as a college student or student something like that but in western western rule western world rule when you still student i don't think that you need to put it as a college student you just like put a little strip there which means that you don't you still don't go to work and then you just do something else maybe yeah you you as a student or college student so that's it that's the difference okay let's go next Oh, okay, now we have to learn together about grammar. So don't be confused first. Because a lot of a lot of uh, students just get like that mm, situations when they like meh situations when they just um, when they just uh, be given the topic is a grammar. I always have this difficulty. Okay. Grammar B, M, E, and R. So basically, it's um, usually usually just called as to be. But it's not there. Usually it is called as to be, and then uh, okay. Usually it is called as be or to be, but in the formal questions like this, they just put it as a be. So don't be confused. Be doesn't mean anything like any other or animal b b e e the one who can sting you the one who like honey or collect honey b is just b b like to be okay to be in the uh, simple present tense and in the first form uh, it's only consists of three which is m is and r that's it that we will uh, learned about today. <clears throat> Actually, how many forms are they that B have? Um, B has three forms. Uh, the first form is M, is R, simple present tense. And the second is about four past tense. Third is about four, perfect. The second form, 
is used for past tense that consists only for two. So it's reduced here. Yeah? For simple present tense, it has three. For past tense, it has two. Two, uh, two participants for be past tense is that was and were. And then for the last one, for perfect, B only consists of one, one member, which is bin. So it's B E E N. So it is like, so it becomes more narrow, narrow, and narrow. Okay, so in grammar B now, we will basically learn about simple present tense, yeah, because we see our B here. Our B here is on uh, consists of M is and R. So it's simple person then. Okay. So here, beside that, besides just write them down like this one, we also will have B. in the form like this. Okay, so it means that my name um, is my, my burning. You can put apostrophe there and then S for my name is. And then the other is just, it can be written down like this one, this one, oops. This one, it means that I am. So the B M here can be written down as here, but just don't forget about the apostrophe. Some of the people just try to put it slang. They just like try to write down without apostrophe, something like this. It's very ugly handwriting. <laughs> but this is, wrong this is not for formal writing this is for maybe text text writing and then else is oh yeah and then they don't uh make it short they just write it down for b here or oh, and then here we have the short version and then this one, this one is for to be and plus the word not. So not means tidak. And then this is also the short version. So it means that dia tidak di rumah. Seperti itu. And then, uh, do we have another not? Yeah, this one. Okay, it's just the same, yeah. Tidak kita tidak gitu. So basically, it's just um, to be plus not, and then they just put it short. Okay, only only the word is and only the word are that can put in short if you put uh, not after it. The word M, you cannot just, I, you, you cannot put it something like this. You cannot just put something like this, so it's not correct. So for M, so for M, you just write down full. So I, M, space, give space, and then not something like
Okay, so I think you already, I think you already actually understand the, the use of B, yeah? Okay, let's just give another explanation. How to, I know, uh, how to analyze which B that we will use. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how to actually Mm -hmm. Wow. Yang indah. Yang notebook. Okay, now how to actually analyze uh, what kind of B that we use? Because sometimes you will not, you will not find a lot of a simple word. Yeah, you will not find, <clears throat> for example, uh, because when you just find she, you will act, you will directly understand that she, the to be of she is, is is, <laughs> is is. So, uh, how if we have a, a more complicated sentence, for example, um, Anita, what is the to be of Anita? So, how, how, to, how to actually analyze this kind of situations is that we will try to think about the subject. Or the noun because subjects always come from noun. And then how to how to define the to be from this word? We have to analyze it as pronoun. We have to analyze it as pronoun. The easiest way to understand is to analyze it as pronoun because of what? Because pronoun only has seven members. We have a they, we have we, I, you, she, he, it only consists of seven. If they, now you will get it, now you will understand. They, to, to be of they is are. Pretty easy. We are. We are. And then you, just put it first here, are. I am. The only one, yeah? Am. And then she is. He is as well. And it is. Okay, now you can you can't actually fill the blank, right? And it does something. 
you have to first you have to put it as a noun because subject always noun subject yeah subject and then after that you have to try to change it into pronoun don't change it in the the question just change it inside of your mind and then the pronoun of anita kata ganti anita apakah anita itu z apakah anita itu we apakah anita itu i you she he or it and then we already understand that anita is a girl's name right so it is she she is uh, she she is this one so anita is something how about this word how about the second example chair how about a chair so chair because chair doesn't have gender and it's actually a thing so we will use this pronoun kata gantinya adalah it jadi apa yang tidak bergender dan dia itu mati tidak mati it's usually it so we have is here but if the word will be this one it will be different because we because we have s here we have the plural form of a chair usually a lot of uh, my students just get trapped because of this question they just uh, remembering that the chair is a non dingy so they just put another is there and this is actually wrong so when you have um, the plural form of everything of a thing of an animal of a tree of a people you will have the pronoun of this one so the pronoun of chair is they and then therefore chair are chairs sorry chairs are is it the same with uh, cats anymore right and then uh, tree when they become trees and then when they become people people is actually people is the plural form of person person means one human one person people is more than one so when you see that um, the subject is people uh, you have to put the to be of r because the pronoun is r okay i hope that you get it because i think that um this it's not just it's not about the the oh oh sorry it's not about the mm, It's not that the question in the, our book is just too simple, but I think that I need to give you something, present you something that sometimes you will get, sometimes you will get tricked. Because a lot of my students just got tricked on that point. And so that the thing that if you have Thing. Let's just open it once again. Okay, now let's see. I will just um, share the screen. If I already found the, already found the. No, I go share screen. This is no more. 
Okay. So this is that we have before. Okay. Uh, another thing is about my names. My names is not the uh, the questions of you. It's not the question of I, but it's the question of name. So name is a thing. A lot of people also get tricked of this. They just focus on the my. And then sometimes they focus on the your, your name, your age. They forgot that actually it's not the question. The question is about the name. So if people just ask about your age, just don't be focused on the first word. Don't be focused on the your. Because this is a possessive. The possessive mean like uh, who, who, who this belongs to. Okay. Um, the name, name, age, or another that don't have gender, once again, it just uh, has a pronoun of it. So please don't focus on the first one. You have to understand, you have to try to translate it, what is really a big question of. And then this one is nanya namanya, ya, bukan nanya tentang. Anda gitu ya atau kamu karena nanya tentang namanya makanya nama tidak bergender therefore the pronoun is it. Okay, we don't have any uh, explanations about be here and then this one. This one kalau ini this one uh, ask about you dari mana kamu so it's about you therefore the to be is are to be nya area. And then it's explanations about I, this one explanations about you, explanation apakah anda sudah something. It's actually um, a questions about you. And this is the answer about I. And then this one is questions about the name, yeah? Bukan the wife, it's just the name that belongs to the wife. So it means that. Tapi pertanyaannya lebih tentang the name. So the question is about the name. So therefore, if you use this old wife is also, it can be pronounced as she. And then she just uh, has a to be is. But I just want you to know that sometimes you need to translate it really well you know, to, to really get what is the point of the question. Ah, kalau she... As the is, and then what is her job? Because job is job doesn't have gender, so it 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 is it. It's not about her, yeah. Uh, this one is a she. This is the she, and then is because it's explained about the she, and then this is this second. This one is also. Explain about the she, and then it's also about the she, and then it's asking about you, although it has the age here, but it's not about asking the age, it's about whether or not you or something like that. And then it's, it's explained about we, and then explained about I, this is. This is why this is used is because this is explained. This is explanations. Jawaban tentang umurnya gitu. Jadi bukan bukan. It's not about the cell. It's not about Sally, but it's it's about Sally's age. And then once again, age doesn't have gender, and it's about something that abstract. So the pronoun is it. Okay, so we already understand about the differentiate of. Country, city, region, we understand about how to differentiate that. We also understand, we try to learn today about um, country and then a lot of uh, suffix. Suffix is S, Vietnamese, Vietnam, and then uh, Java, Japanese, another S, and then An, Canada, Canadian, Indonesia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Malaysia. And then E, Bangladesh, Bangladeshi, Iraq, Iraqi, something like that. And then we also learned about another vocabulary. 
language, culture, and so on and so forth. And then the last one we learned about grammar, how to uh, analyze uh, to be in the grammar, the first form of grammar, B, M, is, and R. So that's it from today, from Miss Aslinda and Real. Hopefully that you enjoy this uh, learning with Real while you do your fasting, wait for your fasting to be broken in Mahrib Sayyid. Hope you're doing well. And see you, see you. Good morning. Bye-bye.